everybody. Hope you're having a great week and welcome to Deep Dive Wednesday. So good to have you guys. It's also been great doing this series called The Way Back and connecting the dots to history and the books of the Bible and going all the way forward to where we are today. I felt that it was very important that we would teach history as people try to um, cancel it or they try to censor our Christian heritage of this country. And so when I went on vacation, um, I just took a whole lot of books with me because I really wanted to study up on and make sure that I knew what I was talking about. And I came to some amazing discoveries that I love sharing with you guys. And that's why it's so important that you come or at least you're watching every weekend online. Also, business as usual when it comes to church this weekend. Um, churches can still fill their capacity up to 50%. And we've been getting maybe close to 50% every weekend. Still social distance and come in with your mask and, and, and do the, all the protocols that makes yourself feel comfortable uh, to make sure that we together can begin to uh, ride out this pandemic and variant and all these other things that are happening. Still praying for people who have COVID. COVID is for real, make no mistake about that. And vaccinations right now are a very, very hot topic right now. So I just want to say one thing. It's a personal decision, and that's something that you have to study for yourself. Um, talk to a medical professional, but also study it for yourself online, and I'm sure you can get all kinds of different information. The main thing is that I would like to say is build up your resistance um, with supplements. Now, I'm not a doctor, but I got common sense. And so build up your resistance. So should you have COVID, um, in Jesus' name, that your symptoms are not as strong as it would be for someone. And maybe this is the time that you get your health back in order, right? Maybe this is a time that you, maybe you should lose some weight. Uh, maybe you have to strengthen your immunity through exercise and get out there and walk or run or hike or do something, okay? Because I love you guys and I'm, I'm doing my best to stay healthy as well. Speaking of books, um, my new book just came out. Look at this, and I'm excited to release it at the end of the month. That doesn't just happen. You know, I don't always promote my books on stage. Um, I, I feel a little self-conscious about that, but you know, I'm gonna do it here on Deep Dive Wednesday. I wrote this book during the pandemic, um, amongst a lot of other things that we did. And this book, that doesn't just happen. How excellence accelerates everything. I think if you take this in your own personal life, the secret sauce to your life, it, to me, is excellence. Um, when we are excellent in what we do, um, when we have an excellent attitude, an excellent, excellent work ethic, spirit, um, all those different things, it translates into incredible results for your life. And I think I've built my life on a level of excellence. I try to be at least. Uh, so I wrote a, a book on it and it's incredible. It's the story of the Queen of Sheba, how she meets Solomon and is blown away. Speaking of Solomon, today we are reading from the Bible in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5 to 14. And I wanna teach a message today on discernment. Discernment. I think we need discernment now more than ever before. Discernment on what voices to allow into our lives. Discernment on making sure that the information that we are watching and listening to, um, we are using the spiritual discernment. You know, spiritual discernment is a gift that God gives to every person, that we all have the Holy Spirit in us. And when we have that, of course, we ask for wisdom, but also we ask for discernment. To discern something means that you know between what is right and wrong. You can test spirits. You know if that's from an evil spirit, you know that's from the Spirit of God. Um, because you're gonna need discernment. You know, all over the world, God uh, allows doors to be open. And sometimes they're not always God's doors. Sometimes it can be the doors that the enemy is going to open. Just because it's a door that's open doesn't mean it's God. So that's why the people of God inspire church that we need to have spiritual discernment in seeing and navigating ourselves through this earth. Uh, while we're here on this world, we are being bombarded constantly with our Instagram, with our Facebook, or LinkedIn, or friends and relatives, and people are sending you videos, and you gotta watch this, and you gotta watch that. Yeah, totally. But at the same time, you have to have discernment so that you are not fooled into believing everything that has been sent to you, or everything that you are watching. Um, that's why it's really important to know what is in your feed, and especially what you're watching. The information that we are receiving is either inciting something or it is inspiring something. And so what we need to do is make sure that we are hearing from the Holy Spirit 
on how we should make our moves in our life. But you cannot make moves in your life without your Bible. This is my daily Bible. Uh, I read this. Um, it's broken up into 365 full day readings and go through the Bible in a year. I do this every single year. And there, there are times that this is not, the reading is not good enough for me at that moment. So I'll go to the book of Proverbs or I'll go to something in the Old Testament and I'll read it with a little bit more intentionality or if I want the words of Jesus. But you have to be able to read your word and the word of God will give you better spiritual discernment than ever before. And you will be making biblically based decisions. Come on, somebody give me an amen. So anyway, um, in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5 to 14, in the, in the NASB version, because it says it the best, uh, it says, in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream. Now, Solomon is the son of King David. And God said, ask what you wish of me, and I will give it to you. How's that? God would come up to you in a dream or in a vision and say, ask me, and I'll give it to you. Whatever you want, I'll give it to you. What would you ask for? <laughs> what would you ask for? What, 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 would it be something material? Would it be something, uh, would it be a healing for somebody? Would it be the return of a son or a daughter to Christ? Would it be for a husband to want to go to church or a wife to want to come to church with you? What would you ask for, right? So think about this. Solomon can ask for anything. He's the new king of Israel. He will only be the third king. Saul was the first, David was the second, and Solomon will be the third king. So we're on a roll here with kings. So God says, ask what you wish of me, and I will give it to you. And then Solomon said, you have shown me great faithfulness to your servant, David, my father, according as he walked before you in truth, righteousness, and uprightness of heart toward you. And you have reserved for him this great faithfulness that you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father, David. And yet I am like a little boy. I don't know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people who are too many to be numbered or counted. So here's the request. Give, so give your servant an understanding heart to judge, your people to discern between good and evil, for who is capable of judging this great people of yours? What, a, what an incredible request of a king. Hmm. God answers, and he says in verse 10, now it was pleasing in the sight of the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing, and God said to him, because you have asked this thing and have not asked for yourself a long life, nor have you asked for riches for yourself, nor have you asked for the lives of your enemies, but have asked for yourself discernment to understand justice. Behold, I have done according to your words. Behold, I have given you a wise and discerning heart so that there has been no one like you before you, nor shall one like you arise after you. I have also given you what you have not asked for, both riches and honor, so that there will not be any amongst the kings like you in all your days. And if you walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and commandments, as your father David walked, then I will prolong your days. Wow. God asks, what do you ask? And he says, I ask for wisdom and discernment. And God gives him wisdom and discernment and riches untold. How amazing is this? Everything that he didn't ask for, God gave it to him. You know, discernment is so important. The Bible tells us in Colossians 2 verse 8, it says, don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world, rather than what comes from Christ. You know, it's important that we ask for discernment. As a matter of fact, there were a group of men that earlier in Solomon's history and in his father's history, before Solomon was even born, that there were men that came from all over to solidify the kingdom of David because Saul was not going to be king, king any longer because he displeased the Lord. And all these men come, and they all come to the support of David, thousands from this tribe, 18,000 from that tribe, and 10,000 from that tribe, the list of all the tribes of Israel. Then finally, there is this one tribe the tribe of Issachar, and that tribe shows up, but they only show up with 200 men. 
200. Thousands here, thousands there, but 200. And the Bible tells us in 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, that from the tribe of Issachar, that there were 200 leaders of the tribe with their relatives, and all these men understood the signs of the times and knew the best course for Israel to take. I think we need people who know the signs of the times and know what course to take with our lives and with our church and with our nation and with this state, but it's going to take discernment. See, not every battle is meant for us to fight. There are battles right now, but you have to pick a battle. And when you pick that battle, you have to realize that this, that, that battle will take something out of you. Rather than sitting on the sidelines and not participating, right? We, as the people of God, have to spiritually enter into this battle. I really believe now more than ever before that we need to be praying for Hawaii, praying for our government. We need to pray God's wisdom over this country, over this nation. But what we need is a revival, power of the Holy Spirit to come. And this weekend, I'm gonna talk about that, on the power of revivals to change a nation. Now, that may not sound exciting to you, but it's exciting to me because without revival, we would not even have this nation. We wouldn't even be here. We would have fallen apart. And right now, we need a revival or an awakening of the power of God for people to come to Jesus and the church to come back to God in the first place and to return and to repent for making all these other things more important than really King Jesus. So as we look at this, what we have to understand is that discernment really means shrewd observation, according to the New American Commentary. As a matter of fact, the Expositor's Bible Commentary says, from a political standpoint, they knew, the men of Issachar knew the future was with David because they understood the times. They cast their lot with David and rather with Saul. You have to understand that David resisted, resisted, resisted. He fled from Saul, hid from Saul. Saul wanted to kill him. And finally, David had to step forth and take the kingdom. And all of these people decided that the kingdom is going to be with David. It's no longer going to be with Saul. It was a difficult time in, our, in, in Israel's history. And during the time when David was not yet king, and while Saul was hunting him down, many men came to follow David. David, they all came to follow him. They came to follow him. But this unique group of 200 men or leaders offered more than battle skills. They had wisdom and they had discernment. They weren't yes men. They weren't telling the king everything that he wanted to hear. They weren't, they weren't okay with certain things. They were saying that David, we come with wisdom and discernment. And I guarantee you that they were bringing some safeguards around David so David did not overreach, that David did not overstep, that David did not cause mandates in the kingdom. By the way, the word mandate is really old. It goes back to biblical times. That he was not handing out mandates that were not good for the people or for his kingdom. So we need a discernment in then, and we need discernment today. So discernment involves two major things, two major things. The first one, number one, is understanding what you see, and number two, knowing what to do. Understanding what you see and knowing what to do. The men of Issachar understood the signs of the times and knew what to do with them. We need to understand what we see and know what to do. Now more than ever, we need discernment to see what's going on in this world, to be awake and aware of what's happening. What is the enemy doing? And what is God doing? What is the enemy doing with disunity in this country? How is he stirring up disunity? How is he fighting? How, how is he allowing leverage to happen in this country and in this state that is actually not healthy for us? It looks healthy. It looks like this is the best step, but maybe it's not. We need discernment, just asking the question. Now, we, after we have discernment of watching what's happening in the country, in the world, and in this state, knowing what to do with those, knowing what to do with those times. So it says that all these men understood the signs of the times. They, they knew what was going on in the world. Their heads were not stuck in their Instagram and not stuck in their Facebook. Their, they, their heads were not in the sand though. Um, they were aware of what was going on in their country and, what, and, the, and how the times were changing and how the tide was turning and how the tables were being turned. And what we need to do is we have to understand how are the tables being turned? What doors are God's doors? What doors are not God's doors? We need discernment of what we're watching, 
what we're listening to. And even though you might be watching something good on Instagram TV, or maybe you might be listening to a really good preacher, or whatever it is, we need to be awake and aware of what's going on in this world. Awake and aware. Number one, they knew the signs of the time. They, were, they understood what they saw. And number two, you have to know what to do. So they knew the best course for Israel to take. Man, I wish we had that. We really need that. That good people in office knowing what they are doing and what's the best course of action for this state and for this nation. We need men and women of Issachar who understand the signs of the times and know what to do with them. Somebody say amen. One more thing. If you don't like where we're headed, you have to remember this in the next election cycle locally and nation, nationally. So let's move on. <clears throat> After gathering all the knowledge, they knew what to do. So they knew what to do. And it's not just about knowing what to do, but the timing and how you do it. And you have to have the right heart in which you do things. You can't be angry when you make these decisions, knowing what to do. I know what to do. Yeah, but you can't be angry. So you have to make sure that you calm your spirit and you understand what you are seeing. See, not only are you making an educated decision based upon the data or what you've analyzed, but it also has to be done in a calculating way that you are strategic in what you do and how you carry that out. So for instance, the hierarchy of decision-making is bad, good. Sometimes we just think it's good or bad. Is that a bad decision or a good decision? Easy, easy money. But how about this? You have bad, you have good, but now you have to go to better and best. If that's a better decision, they have to wait. Is that the best decision? But you cannot have analysis paralysis after you're studying all the data, I'm studying all the data, I'm studying all the data, or I'm, I'm, I'm waiting, it's a wait and see approach. Yeah, there is something to be said about not rushing in so quickly. But there also is something to be said about getting ahead of the curve and making sure that you stave off things that could be detrimental. For instance, discernment, to know if someone that you love is not doing well. You're hearing what they're saying. You're watching their Instagram or their Facebook and you're, you're watching this. I mean, all over right now, people are lacking discernment in what they're posting or even how they comment. It's unbelievable. I did a series before called, Why You Tripping? Why You Tripping? Because people are tripping. So be careful because even I can get pulled into that vortex. And right now it's a very volatile time in our nation. And what we really need is people who understand the times and know what to do with them. And when they know what to do, they know how to carry that out. See, one of the most important things that we need to do in John 13 verse 34 says, a new command I give you, Jesus said, says, love one another as I have loved you, so you must also love one another. What's really disconcerting right now in Hawaii is the vaccine or no vaccine. And I said this earlier, that's a personal decision. But right now, I'm sensing that there is this level of superiority on both sides. I'm not vaccinated. I'm vaccinated. I'm, I'm not vaccinated. I'm vaccinated. And everybody's like, did you get the jab? No. Well, you know, and, and, and there's this, there's this mm, we need to calm everybody down because at the end of the day, we know that this COVID don't care. It don't care, right? So now we need to be careful. We need to treat one another with love no matter if you've got it or if you didn't. We are treating people with love, compassion, understanding, because people are making decisions. They are weighing it. They are, there is risk involved in not taking it and taking it. And people's livelihoods are on the line. Student athletics is on the line for some of them. And right now, people are making decisions. Decisions that they feel they need to make. It's hitting home. And so I know people who have had to move to another state so that their, their, their children can participate in sports in their senior year so they can get a scholarship because sometimes that's the only way. And kids want to fulfill dreams. They want to play. They want to play. And, um, and so they're moving, whether vaccinated or not, it doesn't matter to me. They are moving because they want to fulfill dreams. I totally understand that. And they're making decisions 
that are important to them. They are understanding times and believing they're know, knowing what to do with them. And right now, you have to understand where we are in the world and make your decisions accordingly, not based upon the analysis of the data, but based upon what is the Spirit of God saying to me and my family at a time like this. And that's why we have to get in the Word because it's the Bible that will awaken our spiritual discernment to understand the times and to know what to do with them. So how do you develop your discernment? I'm glad you asked. Here it is, number one. Number one, you gotta ask for it. You ask for it. Discernment is something that can be received from God. Ask for more spiritual discernment. Um, not suspicion, There's, that's a different thing, right? You want discernment. And when you ask for spiritual discernment, God is gonna give you a gift and he's gonna give it to you. James chapter one, verse five to eight says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver for a person who, is, who with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world and they are unstable in everything that they do. Are you experiencing instability in your life? Then ask for discernment and believe that you got it and open your Bible because that will bring you stability. As a matter of fact, um, Charles Spurgeon says, show me a person whose Bible is falling apart and I will show you a person whose life is not. How powerful is that? I think I said it verbatim correctly. I hope I did. That's what he said. So if your Bible is falling apart and you're waking up an, uh, 30 minutes to an hour early so you can get that in or you're using your lunch break to get that in, you know what I'm talking about? Spend less time on your social media and more time in the Bible and you will be blown away by what God wants to do. Number one, ask for it. Ask for it. Ask for it. That's what Solomon did. He says, please give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people that I may discern between good and evil for who is able to govern this great people of yours. How amazing that if we had people in office every day, every day in Honolulu Hale at the state capitol and in Washington, D.C., and even in businesses and churches that would ask, Lord, give me discernment, and I need to ask for more discernment. Give me discernment to lead this church through times like these. Oh, Lord, I need your discernment. Amazing. Wouldn't that be? Lord, give me wisdom and discernment to lead my family right now in a time like this. Believe that you're gonna receive it. Believe that you're gonna receive it. Here's number two. Number two, you have to seek it out. Actively seek it out and search for the wisdom that will strengthen you in discernment, in God's word, and in godly men and women who have gone before you. Look for that. Look for that. Seek it out. Matthew 7, verse 7 to 8 says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened unto you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. The door will be opened to you. And so we have to not just ask for it, but we have to seek out that discernment. And you know, um, I, I think I have a pretty decent level of discernment. I, I can tell when something doesn't feel like it's right or going well. I was telling the staff today that I paddled canoe before, but I wasn't in a part of a club. It's just, you know, six guys that just got out for exercise, but we learned how important paddling was. And we learned from a coach. Coach taught us, and we all did it just basically. I didn't have time to compete, so it was just for exercise. And I remember that I would always sit in seat number one. Seat number one is the pace setter seat. That's that guy in the front row. And all six positions in a canoe, um, the middle is like the powertrain, and the guy at the end, he's the cruiser. I'm, he's actually the guy that steers the canoe. He, he pokes it, and he steers it, and then he'll paddle. So poke and paddle, and he'll do that. But the guy at the front row is determining the pace. He's determining where we're headed, um, how fast we're going to get there. 14 on the right, 14 on, 14 on the left. Hut, hut, ho, switch. But I could tell... I couldn't see if we were out of sync, but I could feel whenever we were out of sync because 
I could feel it. I can't see it because I don't have eyes behind my head. I'm number one, there's five other guys behind me. I couldn't see it, but I can feel it. Feel it. And there's a lot of times in your life that you might not be able to see it, but you can feel it. It's called discernment. Now, be careful that it doesn't ride over into suspicion, because that's a whole different animal. You want discernment. And so when you are in a canoe and you are flying and gliding across that water, across that ocean, it's smooth when everybody is in sync. They're paddling in the same direction at the same cadence, with the same heart, to get to the same destination, and you can feel it. To me, that's what discernment feels like when it's going good. Somebody say amen. Number three, you have to build it up. You have to build it up. In order for our discernment to grow, we must engage our current events and be aware of what is happening around us. Like I said, don't get stuck in your social media, but at the same time, don't put your head in the sand. Because what's happening around us, if you were to be dropped, let's say you fell asleep in a coma two years ago and 2020 goes by, you don't wake up. 2021 is halfway through and you were to wake up last week and come to and everybody was telling you, you're not gonna believe what's happening in the world. Oh my gosh, man, this has happened, that's happened, that's happened. This is what's happened in our nation. This is what's happened all over. Fires here, there's been riots there. Oh my gosh, there's uprisings. Oh, and COVID just came, businesses shut down, kids wear masks all the time, my goodness. Wouldn't you be blown away, right? Well, because we've been living through all of this time, during this 2020 of February, March, and here we are, a year and a half has gone by, and here we are in August of 2021, and it seems like progressively, it's been getting more difficult, and liberties are slowly being removed, and the freedom of choice that you have as an individual American citizen and Christ follower, you're being given less and less choices, it is now the time to discern the times and know what to do with them like the men and women of the men of Issachar. Number three, build it up. We have to move from indecisiveness by putting in the effort to make a wise decision by research. Asking the right people, asking for other people's thoughts, but most of all, asking the Holy Spirit to show you what is going on in the world. I think we are headed faster than ever into a one world government, a one world currency, a time in the book of Revelation that we are getting closer and closer and closer to at an alarming rate. We are accelerating into those end times. We have accelerated there. Are we there yet? Very, very close. As a matter of fact, Jesus can come back at any time. Every prophecy has been fulfilled of his second coming. Every, pro uh, every prophecy up to it has been fulfilled for the second coming to happen. That's what I wanted to say. And that second coming, you have to be ready. You have to be ready. And it's not just, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's now more than ever, we have to be living right, holy living, set apart God's people, and not getting so caught up in the current affairs, even though this weekend, I did mention the vaccinations at the very beginning of my service in person. Um, be very, very aware of what is happening in the world to us. We are being cornered and soon we'll be stuck between a rock and a hard place if you or some of us are not already there now. So what does that mean? That means, man, we need to be on our knees praying for revival over this nation. The political chaos that has taken place, that here we are today, I'm not just talking of after the election, I'm talking about even before that, the political chaos that has gone on in this world, all that's happening right now, that is a concern. So 
who's, the, who's gonna bring the answer? Who's gonna fix this? I don't know who can. And I don't know if it's another presidential race or I don't know if it's when we get another governor. I don't know. But all I know is this, that that is not where our answer is coming from, ultimately. Our answer and our deliverance and our safety and our salvation comes from the Lord Jesus. And we need to pray. My brothers and sisters who are listening to this, we need to pray every day for a revival. And when that revival comes, a lot of things in this world will change. And we need change. And I believe this is how it's going to happen. Listen to this verse, Hebrews 5, 13. I hadn't seen this in a while, but it says, to everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. What's the word of righteousness? Since he is a child, right? So you're gonna be a child if you're just growing up on milk and you're getting a little snippet of a Bible here or there. You're getting like a one verse for your, come on, you need the Bible. And when you read the Bible, is solid food, verse 14, but solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Constant practice to distinguish good from evil. When we see the counterfeit, we will know that it is a counterfeit and it is not the real deal. Here's number four. Number four, let it flow. Let it flow. Let your discernment flow. Love must be the ultimate motivation on this spirit of discernment in which it is used, right? It's not a spirit of a fact checker. Now we have fact checkers all on my Instagram or our church Instagram. Uh, exactly not, it's not exactly right, fact checker. Fact checker. You know what we need? We need Bible checkers. We need people who read the Bible. We need people who discern between what is milk and what is meat. You know what I'm talking about? We need people who are discerning, who understand what's going on in this world. And the best way you're gonna do it is you're gonna, you're gonna be in your Word of God. Two weeks ago, my sermon called On the Way Back, or The Way Back, excuse me, The Way Back, I talked about how important that this Bible is, that this is my Bible. I talked about how important that Tyndale gave his life for this. He was burned at the stake for smuggling Bibles from Belgium into Great Britain because he believed in the Word of God. It was so important that the Word of God got translated by Gutenberg and it went to the Gutenberg Press and it got um, taken from Latin and now put into German. And as the people were be, being able to read the Word of God, it opened the floodgates. When once the people read the Word of God, they were the captives were set free. Whenever people in America started to read the Word of God, then they started to realize how wrong it was, how evil it was to have slavery in America. We were one of the first nations to make a proclamation that slavery was wrong. Once America went into that area and fought, shed 600,000 lives over this one issue that was so critical. And, and Abraham Lincoln said, when enough American blood has been spilled, then, we, then this war will come to an end. He understood that the, the blood was being spilled over this, that the blood of Jesus actually at the end of the day was what was bringing liberty to people. And as we are slowly losing liberties, the one that brings liberty to us is Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, not only that, but the framers of our constitution knew from the very beginning, I'm discovering this all over again, this is amazing, I, I hope you knew this, and if you didn't, it says that, that we were pursuing life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in the Declaration of Independence. And that Declaration of Independence was a cessation from the, from the monarchy. And it wasn't just because of taxes. It was because they were losing their religious freedoms, their freedom to read, their freedom to express themselves the freedom to be able to have their own kind of church and not worried about the Church of England telling them what sermons could be preached and what could not. And when that liberty came and when those freedoms came, there was an awakening that took place in America. Because why? Because they were back at the Word again and realized that if the Son sets you free, then who are we to keep anybody in captivity, right? Then if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. And I pray that as you open up and read this word, that you will realize that you are free. We are free people because of what Jesus did on that cross for me and for you. Time's getting closer. And if Jesus delays and Lord, leave us all on this earth to do good and to make a difference while we're here. And I pray 
that by the power of the Holy Spirit, that as you ask for discernment, God will reveal it to you. He will give it to you because you ask, you seek it out. And when you walk in it and you let it flow, let that discernment flow and you see things with spiritual eyes, not just with physical eyes. And you realize all that's happening in this world. God is going to use it for his glory. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says this, for God causes all things to work together. Doesn't mean that he causes it, but he'll cause it to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. May the word of God dwell richly within your hearts. May he touch you powerfully. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn his countenance toward you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and grant you peace in the name of Jesus. Inspire Church, I love you. Thank you for being with us every Deep Dive Wednesday, for every weekend online or in person. Like I said at the very beginning, we are business as usual. And uh, the, the decrees or the mandates by the governor said that up to 50%, that's why we have a lot of services and we never go above 50%. We're just when we were gonna go back to a, a different cycle, a different schedule, then he comes out with this um, new decree. So we're gonna honor that and can't go above 50%. Come through the doors. Um, if you're sick, don't come. Please don't come. If your child has got the sniffles, don't come. Watch us online. But do what you normally do as if you're going to Costco or Sam's Club or those great stores and come in, right? And um, worship with us. Worship with us. Worship with us. Unhib uninhibited worship. And uh, this series, The Way Back, is powerful. I'm telling you right now, it's amazing and I praise God for it. So come and join us. I look forward to seeing you guys. May the Lord bless you. And one last thing, remember, that doesn't just happen. Excellence accelerates everything. You can pre-order it on MikeKai.tv. And I'm really excited about this book, Excellence Accelerates Everything. May the Lord bless you. God bless you. Aloha.